Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mastery Mate by Lena AI, the world's first project based learning AI tool. Very excited to share this with everyone. So, first of all, you can see a list of project recipes. These are some projects that I've been busy working on, some of the great projects that I worked on with teachers and leaders at their Future of Education conference in Florida. So let me show you how it works. So at the top right, you can see a new recipe button. This is where you start your project development. So basically there's two options. You can choose, I have an idea, or you can choose, I need ideas. If you have an idea, you can start with any idea or topic. You can add any learning objectives that you wish to target or any standards. You can select a grade level, subjects, and a duration. And it's as simple as that. Your recipe, your project will be generated. The second part is I need ideas. This is a good place to start if you have a standard or some learning objectives. You're wishing to turn it into a project or if you just wish to find out what kind of projects you can do. There's many benefits with this one. So I'd like to give you a little example. I've just chosen a random standard on the Next Generation Standards website for middle school. So for grade six to grade eight. This standard is to analyze and interpret data to provide evidence for the effects of resource availability on organisms and populations of organisms in an ecosystem with a focus on interdependent relationships in ecosystems. So it may not sound that exciting. I know it is because I've done things like this many times. But if you look at that, you might sort of be swayed in one or, or the other direction. What's really interesting about this platform is that you can generate ideas and have new ways of approaching that standard or even new ways of understanding that standard as a teacher. So you choose a subject the year level, the duration, and you select generate ideas. It's as simple as that. This will generate a range of different ideas. There's an invasive species. There's an ecosystem in a bottle. There's an aquatic ecosystem health. As you can see, very varied activities, but could be very relevant um, to your specific area. So I know there's a big problem with invasive species in the Florida Everglades. I had that conversation with many people at the conference. So let's try that one. This will bring you to a project recipe wizard. So this is where the magic happens and where there's lots of human interaction. And we're really trying to guide that project with our knowledge and our expertise, but we're also allowing the AI to frame some things for us um, that should be very good. So if you have a look here, the driving question, how can we use data-driven solutions to minimize the negative effects of invasive species on our ecosystem and protect its biodiversity? The essential questions are then all connected to the driving question. So that looks pretty good. I'll just go to OK. There's also another option where you can edit. So you could also think, wait a sec, it may not be data-driven solutions. It could just be brainstorming solutions, however you would like to change it. But just remember, if you do change it, it may affect the alignment with the curriculum standard just the same. So ensure that um, that all links up correctly. If you find as well that maybe it's not really giving you what you would like, you can have two options to edit it manually and change it yourself. You can also click on edit with AI and I'll show you what that looks like in the portfolio section. With every good PBL, there should be an amazing entry event. It's a great thing just to sort of, it shows students that it's a new project that they have to think about a new way of thinking. It's a great time for inquiry questions to develop. As you can see, some really interesting activities. I'm just going to choose the mysterious intruder. A local park ranger discovers an unusual plant or animal and needs help identifying it and understanding its potential impact. So I like that. It's pretty cool. You can imagine how interesting you could make that entry event. 
So we're ready to go to the next step. This is our portfolio section that we've been developing a lot. The portfolio activities will align directly with the learning goals, with the outcomes and with the curriculum standard. So the idea is these are individual portfolio activities that students will be able to complete on their own and you'll be able to have evidence, I guess, of their involvement in the product, in the project, but also a, a way that they can capture some of that great learning and have some really highly scaffolded activities. So if you have a look here, it's selected and approved, well, sorry, it's generated five different portfolio activities. You have activity one, activity two, we have some data collection, lots of data, and a solution architect. So very scaffolded, very clear information. It looks great. You could take that and say, sure, we can make that work. We can find something like this. But this is where it gets really interesting. If you go to edit with AI and you are in an area where you do have this happening locally, then why not adapt the portfolio to make it extremely relevant? So let me just now make this about the Florida Everglades. So just like that, we've been able to adapt the project to be localized and to be relevant. There may be a big project you're doing at school related to the Everglades. There also may be some opportunities to get funding related to these kind of projects. So just like that, you've created a project that's connected to sustainability. And maybe then you could take this project and talk to some sustainability and environmental groups in the Everglades and then create some great connections. So straight away, it will give you incredible, incredible local information. You don't have to go and find that out. Now you know that you could talk about the Burmese Python. So then it's as easy as going to approve selected. We go to the last step. This step, we're really looking at assessment. So as we continue to develop, we will have more ways than rubrics. I think rubrics are a good way to start and to really consider multiple types of rubrics. So we could have one rubric that's directly related to the standard, that's directly related to the learning goals. We could then have another rubric that's related to the four C's, the communication, the critical thinking, those kind of things. You could also develop a rubric that is related to your school's values. And so then the project, you can also reflect through the project on the school's values. So I think it's really important and it's something we're continuing to develop. So as you can see, it will give some pretty standard kind of rubrics in four levels. Again, as we develop, you'll have more and more chance to customize your rubrics. Last of all, reflection prompts. So this is something that we are continuing to develop. Eventually there will be a student facing side where they'll have a portfolio and things like that. And the reflection prompts will be part of the project. And the idea is that the students reflect multiple parts of the project, but the reflections are very closely aligned with the learning goals. So it really does add that last little like this is what we're learning about and to, to make sure those reflections are really strong academic reflections, just as well as social, emotional and holistic. And that's as easy as it is. The project is now created. You can publish the recipe that will go to a community of published recipes and that's it. So I hope you liked the demo of Mastery Mate. I'm very, very excited to see where this is all going. Could you imagine just how many incredible projects are going to be created with this method. So thank you so much for listening. I really hope you enjoy Mastery Mate. It's masterymate.ai. Please enjoy and please let me know how you go. Have a great day.